Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and we're back with another video, this time taking a look at how to use keyframes to change fonts in After Effects. So previously this was completely unavailable without um, you know, third-party plugins, but basically with this version 17 release of After Effects, which is out right now if you're a subscriber to Creative Cloud, you can now use expressions to change fonts in After Effects, which is super, super helpful. Now, I'm just gonna be walking you through kind of a multi-stage process to do that with random um, functions or with keyframes, and then some tips and tricks that I think are very useful. Um, we could do that at the end. So you can see here that I have this keyframes um, word here, and it's jumping between different fonts. So it, this just happens happens to be the same font, which is different bold levels, but um, pretty much in the latest version of After Effects, they've added a new function in here under uh, under the uh, expression panel. Under text, you now have, well, first of all, now you have text. Second of all, now you have source text. You could do choose fonts. Um, you could choose properties, and you could change all of these properties of a font in the expressions panel, which was not possible before. So uh, that's step one. Step two, before you get started, what you're gonna wanna do is go to file project settings or control alt shift X if you're on PC and have really long fingers. And under expressions, you can go to JavaScript. So if it's on legacy, this isn't gonna work. You need to be in JavaScript. Okay, just one last thing before we start the tutorial is we just wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes on design, animation, business, and more. Skillshare is the perfect place to learn from creators you already love, like this one from Jake in Motion. Whether you wanna boost your creativity or career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. Join the more than 7 million creators learning on Skillshare by following the link down in the description where you can get a free two month premium membership. Premium membership is more affordable than other platforms at less than $10 a month and gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are right for you. Big shout out and big thanks to Skillshare for making this video possible. Anyways, let's just get right into the tutorial. Okay, so let's start really basic. Let's talk about the set font feature. So we'll go to this first composition here and I'm gonna open up my source text. So under text, source text, I've created a little expression here. So what I did was I created a variable, array, and in this array, I have one, two, three, four, five, six fonts. On the bottom here, you'll see something called style set font array and value zero. So what I'm telling this to do is I'm saying for the style of this font, set the font to the value in this array at 0 0.0. So this here is the zero value. For arrays, it, go, it starts at zero. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. So I know there's six fonts here, but it's zero through five. So we're now choosing the font number zero. If I change this to one, it changed the font. If I set this to three, it'll change the font. The limitation of this, you know, just from the get go is that you need to know the name of the font before you can even get started. And if you have a lot of fonts you wanna go through, it could take a lot of time. There's really no easy workaround. Um, this really is only good if you're using like, you know, two to 10 fonts, anything beyond that, it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. The way you could find your fonts is if you click this little triangle here under the expressions language menu, go to text and select font, you get a little pop out and you can actually choose which font you wanna use. So in my case, I just chose all of these Gotham fonts. Um, if you're downloading this project file on Patreon, you probably won't have the Gotham fonts installed. Um, so just be aware that you might get some errors if you don't change these fonts on your end. Maybe for the Patreon, I will change these fonts to system fonts, but just be aware of that. These values need to be corresponding to fonts that you actually have installed. If you just select a font, let's see, uh, Verdana and hit okay, it will, import that little Verdana um, tag. Now, if you type in Verdana dash bold, you know, you could almost guess that um, that, that font exists. I'm gonna control X that and then control paste that in and set this to zero. Um, yeah, so it doesn't look like Verdana bold is actually a font, but Verdana actually is. So uh, if I just leave this as Verdana, you'll see that it imported that Verdana font. So once you have this, setting up keyframes is super easy. So we'll jump into our second composition here and open up our text, source text. 
all I've done here is I've added this value R and I've set the R value to be a slider value, which now allows me to use this slider. I did change the, the, the name of this, by the way, by just hitting enter and just typing font, but originally it did say slider control. And now I'm setting that array value to be the slider value. So what does this allow me to do? When I hit you on the keyboard, it allows me to set keyframes under this font and it will change the font dynamically. To be aware that if you go to a value outside of your font library, it's just gonna default to some random font. If I set a keyframe at zero, set a keyframe for three, you get the picture. You can highlight these fonts, right click, go to keyframe interpolation and set this to hold. And now it will just go between the two fonts and not the values in between. That's how you would keyframe fonts in After Effects. So from here, assuming you don't want to keyframe it, assuming you want it to be a randomly, randomly go through the, the different um, values, you can set up a random function instead of a keyframe function. So let's jump into this next composition here and um, look at a keyframe, open up the text and source text again. And you can see here that we've added a couple more lines of code. Things that are have two dashes in front of them, these are commented out. We're gonna be taking a look at these secondly, but um, the, my R value now, instead of being a slider control, it's just a random. So I have a math.round here, which will round my random number to be a value um, that's a whole number because again, I don't want it to bounce between, you know, if, if, if it calls for 1.2, there there is no such thing as 1.2. We only have one and two. So I need this math.round there. My random value is gonna be between zero and five, which is zero, one, two, three, four, five. Again, six values, starts at zero, ends at five. However, this gives me a very unpleasant look. It's a seizure inducing blinking effect that could be quite annoying to look at. So the random function will basically choose a new random number every frame. That's super fast. But when you couple it with the seed random function, we're able to determine what that random value is based on a seed value. So the seed value will determine your random number. Now, what that does is then it just gives you the same random number every frame. So what we can do instead is we could constantly adjust the seed value. But once we have the ability to adjust the seed value, now we can adjust how often we change the seed value, which is critical to this because we want it to slow down. So when you take the time function, which would be kind of you know every frame, and then you divide that by a fractional number, so let's say like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, what you're doing is you're now saying, or don't change it every frame, change it every 10th frame or, or every quarter of a second. So I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little complicated. So you could even add a slider control to this and pick whip it to the slider control. And so now you can animate or control keyframe the amount of delay based on a slider control. Okay, so the final part of this tutorial is kind of the extra credit. We're not gonna go into too much detail here, but I did add a checkbox to the layer and an if else statement. What that if else statement is saying is basically if this checkbox is checked, use one function, random, or if it's not checked, then use the slider control. Simple as that, you can copy the, the expression here if you choose to. The other thing we're gonna talk about is how to center up the anchor point because different fonts have various different um, widths and heights. And so we wanna make sure that the anchor point is set up correctly. So the layer is always in the middle of the composition or always where I choose for it to be. So to do this, we're just gonna be using a Evan Abrams expression from one of his past tutorials. We're just looking at the width of the, of the layer. We're looking at the height of the layer. Um, and the position of the width and the height or the top or the left side of the layer. And we're basically just through addition and division, finding the center point and making sure it's aligned into the center of the layer instead of being off center. So um, pretty simple stuff here. You could just, again, copy the expression here. If you wanna see the full Evan Abrams video, I'll link it down in the description. Anyways, guys, that was quite a long video, but um, I hope you did learn something new about setting keyframes for fonts. And if you did, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, check out the project file on Patreon, and always share with us on Twitter and Instagram your projects that you created with these tutorials. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.